In this video, we'll be looking at a demo of EC2 Traffic T-Console. T-Console is a Windows application that connects to your virtual or physical SIP meters and provides access to contact center traffic analytics, diagnostics, and troubleshooting. Users can analyze their traffic within the T-Console app, and they can also export the traffic to CSV text files for integration with business intelligence systems. We'll be looking at both of these applications in this video. T-Console can connect to multiple SIP meters installed throughout your network. In this case, there are three meters connected. Each meter is identified by serial number, for example, 8192-3. Let's take a look at the traffic summary for this meter. The traffic summary will list all the SIP trunks detected by this meter. A SIP trunk is identified by the IP address and port number that is used for SIP signaling. On this date, November the 24th, there was only one SIP trunk active. Let's select this trunk to view the daily traffic profile. The day is divided into 15 minute intervals. The chart on the left shows call volume and the chart on the right shows peak channel usage in each 15 minute interval. We can move the highlight bar to select a particular interval. For example, during 9.30 to 9.45 a.m. there were 79 answered calls, one unanswered call, and a maximum of 15 simultaneous calls. The bottom half of the screen shows a log of call detail records during the interval. Each record includes the time, direction, phone numbers, and conclusion of the call. If a call is not answered, we record the SIP response code to help identify why the call did not go through. A SIP response code is a three-digit integer along with a reason phrase, such as 486 busy here. SIP response codes and their corresponding reason phrases are defined in publicly available RFCs for session initiation protocol. We may be interested to know how many calls in total were blocked on this date and what were the most common reasons for call blockage. By selecting call summary, we can see the total number of inbound and outbound calls that were not answered and a summary of the SIP response codes that were used to reject these calls. If a call is answered, the meter will measure the voice quality of the call by tracking the inbound and outbound RTP streams. Let's highlight an answered call and select MOS score. By tracking the RTP packets from the contact center side and also from the telco side, the meter is able to accurately measure bidirectional packet loss, latency, and jitter. These values can then be used to calculate an overall voice quality measurement such as mean opinion score for the contact center side and telco side independently. As we will see later, all of the raw values used in this calculation are included in the CSV files that are exported to the local drive, giving users the opportunity to apply alternative models to calculate voice quality. We can navigate to a different day by choosing Select Date from the menu. We can also view the entire month of November. Each row represents a day of the month, showing peak channel usage and call volume for the entire day. We can select any day to access the daily traffic profile. So far we've been viewing traffic for the entire contact center. The meter is also tracking each internal and external phone number that it detects and compiling separate analytics on each phone number. Here we see a list of the top 50 phone numbers by call volume for November the 24th. We can select any number from this list to see a daily or monthly traffic profile. It is also possible to group phone numbers together. Once a group of numbers is defined in the group table, the meter will provide similar monthly and daily analytics for each group. Up to this point, we have been analyzing traffic data within the T-Console app. Now we will take a look at how this data is stored on our local drive and how it can be integrated with other tools. The main application directory is C colon IP. Inside are subdirectories for each meter, which are named based on the meter serial number, such as 8192.3. The data for each day are stored in a separate file. Each file is named in year, month, day format. For example, this file contains the data for November 24th. The size of the files will depend on call volume. A call center with 30,000 calls per day will produce a daily file that is roughly 10 megabytes. 
This translates to about 300 megabytes per month, or 3.6 gigabytes per year. The simple file structure makes it easy to backup data and also to purge older data. We can backup this directory and delete older files based on timestamp or file name. These files are in a binary format that is only readable by the T-Console app. However, additional daily files are created in PDF and CSV format. The report directory contains daily reports in PDF format. Let's take a look at the report for November the 24th. The information we viewed earlier in the T-Console app is summarized in this report, including the most active phone numbers for inbound and outbound traffic, overall traffic for the entire contact center and for each user-defined group. The CSV folder contains text files which can be imported into a database or other business intelligence system. Let's take a look at the SIP CDR file for November the 24th. Each call record in this file includes all the same fields that we saw earlier in the T-Console app. In particular, for answered calls, all of the RTP information is included, including bidirectional packet loss, latency, and jitter. These values can be used to calculate MOS score or any other alternative measure of voice quality. Now that we have seen how the data is stored on the local drive, let's return to the T-Console app to demonstrate a few additional features. Sometimes when troubleshooting call routing issues, it is necessary to look deep into the SIP signaling to diagnose the problem. The best way to do this is to place a test call and capture the resulting SIP messages for further analysis. Let's capture a test call to show how this works. First we select the SIP trunk we want to perform the capture on, and then we choose SIP number capture. Here we can enter the phone number that we will be using to place our test call, so that the meter can filter out any SIP messages that do not belong to our test call. We then start the capture and place our test call. Notice the size of the capture file will begin to increase as SIP messages come in. Once our test call is complete, we can stop the capture, which will save the capture file to our local drive in a PCAP file format. We can then open the file in a utility such as Wireshark to inspect the messages in detail and assist with our investigation. This concludes our demo of EC2 Traffic T-Console. For more information, such as our user manual and product brochure, please visit prylink.com/ec2traffic. Thanks for watching.